at Collective. Let's get into a reading. So it is about to storm. So you're going to hear that in the background. That's another reason why it's so dark already. I'm going to see what's coming in for you in love. Friendly reminder, if you're dealing with the Pisces, I have a Pisces only channel and Patreon and channel members get to see these first. You can check out everything I have to offer. If you just want to be nosy, all of that's down below. All right. Let's see. All right. There's a relationship coming in or a relationship in your life that can stand the test of time. It's a relationship where this person is your divine counterpart. Some of you are going to have to go through a season of distance and interferences for a new sense of passion to take place, but that is only going to be for a few of you. So if that's not your part of the story, don't take it. For some of you, this could be a new person, but what I'm saying is that there's going to be a divine connection coming in for you that can stand the test of time. I feel like this person is going to play a big role in your life. I just heard your faith has been put to test for far too long. This, this person is here to ease your mind, ease your pain, ease your worry. They're here to help you fight those battles where you have fought them all along. That's what I heard. Okay. This person's going to be really proud to know you. I see you guys really being vulnerable with one another. You could go through six huge life shifts together to strengthen your foundation with one another. To become who you're supposed to be so you guys can become closer. You know, like the couples that are married for 20, 30, 40 years, they'll tell you, you know, we went through a season where we kind of separated and we had to strip the old version of us down and come to the table as the new version of us and fall in love with that new version of us. And it's like each time that they do that and they find who they are this time around, who they are right now. There is a new sense of vulnerability that can come to the table. Are you willing to accept me in all my flaws? Everything that's wrong with me and everything that's right with me. And that could be six times where you and this person fall more in love with one another. This could be going through a hardship in your relationship. And then heaven forbid going on a journey where maybe you guys aren't getting what you want whether it's a fertility journey or a journey of finances, again, getting closer together. This person's going to be really proud to, to know you, to love you. I've heard, I'm hearing the song, you're the best I ever had, best I ever had. Shawty, you my everything, you all I ever wanted. We can do it real big, bigger than we ever done it. Is that, is that the lyrics? I feel like that song is from the early 2000s. I do not know what song that is. I know the song. I even have the song on my playlist, but I don't know what the title of the song is. Okay. This person can have green eyes. This person can have a soft smile. And this person, when they smile at you, their expression is going to light up. You bring them peace. You brighten up their day. I'm getting a pure, innocent love, a sweet love, a consistent love, a stable love, a love that's still going to have passion after so many things have changed, so many things have went wrong. But have they went wrong or have they shown us time and time and time again that we have fought for one another and that we have the strength and the courage to stay dedicated to one another? Some of you, if this is a separation, somebody's about to shock you and come in with an offer, an offer to reunite. They're going to show up in a very passionate way. It's going to knock your socks off. Because distance could have brought clarity for them. And they could be kind of feeling like what they're showing me is a dog that ran away from home. And, you know, maybe the dog was living its best life. It was like, yeah, I'm out of the fence. Ha, huh, I can go explore. But maybe it got lost. Maybe it lost itself along the way and it couldn't find home until two to three days later. And when it's 
home, it's so excited to be home, it doesn't want to leave your side. That's kind of the energy I'm getting. So if this is a no contact, this is a divine connection that's about to come back together. And this person plays a big role in your life. They really make you learn lessons. They make you reevaluate. They make you change. There could even be a recognition here that one of you or both of you have ran from something and you're tired of doing that. Again, I said one of you or both of you, okay? Could just be them or it could be both of you. A lot of you don't expect this person to approach if it is a no contact. You don't expect this person to come in with this, to want to offer something. Give me more. What's this person going to offer? They're going to offer to get to a place of peace. This could be a lover having communication with you about action or goals that they want or that they have and how you come to play in those goals, in those dreams, in that vision and how you are going to play a big role in their life, but also how they're going to play a big role in your life, a big role to get you to a place of stability, a big role to help bring in a, a sense of peace. Because this person wants to, it's like they want to clarify how they feel, what your place is in their life. This could even be a relationship where you're with them and maybe others don't respect it or don't understand it. What they're showing me is like a dynamic where they're together. Maybe one person gets more attention than the other. Maybe one person has a business role or a career role that's very demanding. And sometimes the demand of other things. The, the scenario they're showing me is a celebrity. And the celebrity is kind of getting consumed by people. So much so that the people are pushing the lover out of the way. And that person comes back and goes, no, come on. And that's what I've seen. So for some of you, that could be something that's happening. It could have been an energy of things have tried to push us away, but I played a big role in their life and they played a big role in my life. And at the end of the day, this love is innocent. It's pure. It's sweet. And it's something that we both cherish, which is why we're coming back together, which is why we do feel so much passion and almost impulsiveness to make this work, to fix it. And again, somebody could be recognizing that they run from love and that they're tired of running from love. Somebody here could be finally recognizing that you're the one that makes them want to change. That's interesting. Now, here's the thing. Don't be thinking you change nobody unless they come and told you that, okay? Because I don't need y'all down in the comments screaming at me. Do not be thinking that you have changed someone unless they come in towards you and say, hey, you've changed me. Baby, you changed me, okay? I definitely see communication coming in about someone's vision, about what this looks like, how they want this to progress, the dreams that they have, the goals that they have, what they hope you guys can conquer together, succeed together. And that's going to give you some sense of like peace of mind, reassurance. Again, if we go back to what I was just saying, the scenario they gave me was the celebrity being kind of ushered in and everyone, all eyes being on them, attention being on that celebrity and that celebrity recognizing, wait, my most, my most prized possessions right there. Hold on a second. I got to go back in and get that. What the fuck? Move y'all. Come on. Come No, come on. And then that person's like, yo, this is important to me. Y'all push this person out of the way again. Y'all gonna have some, I got something to say about it. Stop. That could be something that's happening here. So maybe this person can feel, even though you guys have been together for some time, that maybe you need a little more reassurance right now. That they're ready to start telling you the goals that they have over this relationship. The dreams that they have about this relationship, what they hope this can turn into. Because I would say a relationship or a marriage without dreams, without hopes, without wishes, I don't know. In my eyes, it wouldn't be one worth living. You want to be able to go after something together. You want to be able to talk about what you hope it can grow into, whether that is children, buying multiple homes, 
buying businesses and then being successful, not having a damn thing and working at Walmart, whatever you want to do, whatever you want to do. But being able to have that mutual shared interest, the shared attraction of we both want this. This is both of our goals. We're working hard at something and we're doing it together. But for some of you, they could want to voice this to you because they feel that you need reassurance or there's been time apart and they want you to know that even though there's been time apart, they still see you in their future. And now's the time to make that happen. Oh God. Okay. Again, this person can have green eyes. So right now, this person could be a little anxious and worried, okay? If this is a no contact, this person's anxious and worried, especially if they did run, that they now see it was an unwise choice and they wanna come back. So here's an example. I know of people who have went through significant deaths, whether it was a de death of a brother or sister or a parent and then broke up with the person they were dating because they needed to grieve. And after grieving, they might recognize, okay, I didn't have the strength to handle a relationship on top of everything else, but maybe letting that go was an unwise choice. In that moment, maybe I didn't know how to cope, but in this moment, I'm looking back and recognizing I should have figured out a way. So now I wanna go in and say, listen, that was an unwise choice. If this is someone who didn't realize what they had until it was too late, they wanna come in and tell you, listen, it was an unwise choice for me to not recognize this for what it was, for me not to want to give, or maybe see that I was running from you because you made me feel something that felt really unfamiliar. And although I liked it, it felt like something I couldn't have and something I couldn't enjoy and I wasn't used to it. So instead of telling you that, instead of telling you, this feels weird. Why does this feel weird? I'm not used to this which could have been a positive, they turned it into a negative and then they ran. That could have been a lesson here. Now, again, they look back and they think that it was an unwise choice and they're anxious over it if this is a no contact. If this is a lover that you're with, they feel like you could be a little anxious and worried because there's something coming back to haunt you or that you could be getting confused or giving yourself an illusion around what's taking place in the relationship or their actions. Here's an example. Let's say you're a woman and you've been through hell. Let's say you dated every F boy known to mankind. It's like if we had a dictionary of F boys, it would have pictures of your exes in it, okay? And let's say that every time you would date an F boy, you learned that in the beginning of the relationship, they would always talk, turn their phone up because they didn't care if you seen anything. But once they got tired of you, they would start turning their phone down because they were always hiding something. And that was the moment when you knew that they were cheating or hiding something on their phone because they went out of their way to always make sure the screen could not light up when they were near you. But let's say that this new person or this past person who's coming in no, this would be someone you're with. So let's say that this is someone that you're with and those past people have put you through that kind of trauma. And now that you're with this new person, maybe a behavior has changed, but they've not recognized it. Maybe the past two nights, they've done the throw in their phone and it just so happened that it was throwing on the screen. You could have automatically went in high alert and been like, holy sh. Great, here we go. I think I've seen this here before and I did not like the ending. Alert, 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 abort mission. I remember this, I've done went through this multiple times, so thank you. You could be on kind of overdrive and this person could be feeling that again, you need some sense of reassurance, that you need some sense of, no, 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 don't overthink it, no, no, no. I know you're not asking me to jump through hoops, but I'm gonna jump through hoops to show you that I'm not hiding anything, that I'm all in. With this Five of Swords, to me, this is the energy of I'm going to win you at all costs. It's me and you. And that means if I need to sit here and be like, listen, go through my phone. There's literally nothing to hide. And I know it might seem like I'm making up for the past people's shit and what they put you through, but I want you to be reassured that we are getting to a place of peace together and you shouldn't overthink it. I promise you it's okay. I know you're used to the chaos. I know you're used to things being one way one minute and the next minute they're completely different. 
it doesn't bother me to reassure you that it's going to be okay. It doesn't bother me to reassure you that this is exactly what you think it is and I'm not hiding anything. It's okay that I reassure you. And this person could be a little anxious on how to maybe approach it. There's so many options on how to start this conversation, needing to bring patience to the table, needing to be understanding, needing to not make you feel bad for the fact that maybe they've seen something and you've not noticed it yet or you have noticed it but you can't help it. So I am seeing that as well. For some of you, this is someone who wants to win you at all, at all costs, period, point blank. Yeah, getting what you deserve, what's fair. See, that's what I'm saying. And I feel if we go back to the energy of you being with someone, if someone truly loves you, they're not going to see your scars and your trauma as, as a burden, as a problem. They're going to see it as something that they need to recognize and temper around and respect and understand that that could be a sore spot. An example. If you've been cheated on before, you're more likely to tiptoe around people because you know exactly what it can feel like. You're more likely to make sure you're respecting boundaries when you're around others, husbands and wives. You're also going to respect the person that you're with and make sure you ain't putting yourself in any compromising positions or predicaments. You're going to kind of really recognize the circumstance and step in the circumstance so then that way you don't get your ass in trouble, okay? That's what I'm seeing here. I'm saying that this person is like, listen, it's not a problem that I need to reassure you. It's not a problem that I need to come in and tell you this or show you that, hey, I'm still into this. No, I get it. We've been together for a year, but hey, have no doubt. Like I still, let's go out, let's go out. I want us to go out. Like let's, let's go date, let's go do all of this. And it's just going to be like another reason for you to like fall in love with them. It's going to be another reason for you to feel reassured that they're the one for you because they're not going to hold your problems and your weaknesses and the things that you perceive as a flaw against you. They're going to help you. They're going to say, listen, I'm not mad at you. Like, I'm, it's fine. I promise. I promise. It's going to be okay. One day, this isn't going to be that big of a deal to you. One day, you're going to recognize that I'm not them, and that's okay. It, might, it ain't today, but you still have that trauma. That is still a trigger. That is still a wound. That is still a bruise, and I'm going to respect it. That's fine, but the wrong person will make you feel bad about it. The wrong person will shame you and guilt you and make you feel bad about the things that you've been through that maybe takes a little time to get over. You know, like when you live life in a state of fight or flight, whether it's abusive relationship or those on again, off again, toxic situationships, they say one thing, they do another. When you live in that energy of fight or flight and there's no sense of peace, it feels really weird when there is peace. And you're very quick to reevaluate what's going on around you. How does that feel? What's everyone's body language? Because you're on high alert. You're waiting for to hit the fan because you're used to hitting the fan. And with this person, they're saying, listen, I'm here to reassure you. And if that means taking action to come in and say, listen, I want this, I want you. I'm going to pour my heart out. I'm going to have the strength and courage to say, I want to reunite with you and I want us to go out and so can be it. Or it is someone coming in and letting you know that you're everything that they want. Or it is someone that you're in a relationship with reassuring you that you are still everything. And they will have the strength and the courage to stay committed to this even when you don't understand why. Even when you're questioning why are they still there. Have you ever seen... Okay, so I watch like on Instagram. Sometimes I'll be scrolling. It's really rare. But sometimes I'll be scrolling. And the couple, Matt and Abby, sometimes he will record her and she will be like crying and saying, I feel so mean. I feel like a butt. And he'll be like, no, 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 you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. Sometimes we can recognize when we're being our worst selves. And sometimes we will ask ourselves, okay, I've been horrible to them. Maybe I have been not m messing with my partner or showing them that they're attractive. I've been just kind of staying to myself because I'm tired, I'm depressed, I'm exhausted. 
you could then feel like, well, I mean, I get it. You said that you were committed to me, but you know, some people's commitments have links. This person's along the lines of, my commitment has no links. When I said I'm in it, I'm in it. That means your bad sides, that means your good sides, that means when you're great, that means when you're awful, that means the good side of you, the bad side of you, all of it. When I told you I'm dedicated, I meant it. I have the strength and the courage to mean what I say and say what I mean. And I'm a very calculated person. I know exactly what I'm signing up for. So please do not think that I'm being naive and that I'm getting something that I don't recognize what I'm getting because I do. I'm choosing you wholeheartedly and it's for a reason. And if I need to tell you the reasons, I'll tell you the reasons. That's this person's energy. And it could again be a conversation that's going to be like very impulsive because they feel that you need this offer or that you need this conversation, period. And again, I feel like that's, one of the best qualities about this person. Again, they play, they are a big role in your life. I love this person, how amazing. Yeah, this could be someone who's asking for advice. If this is a no contact, they're asking for advice. If this is someone you're with, they could be asking people what to do. Some of you, this could be a relationship where they're trying to get the passion back. They feel that you guys have maybe gotten stuck in the ebb and flow of everyday life. We go to work, we come home, we pay bills, we cook dinner, we go to work, we come home, we cook, we pay, pay bills. That's kind of what I'm getting. And they could be asking people or asking advice from people that they trust on how do we get that spark back? How do we go from being a married couple to dating again like when we first fell in love? Now, if this is someone where there's time apart or no contact, this is someone where the passion between you two is like so intense, you make others stare. Have you ever seen like two people that can come together and you guys are like, okay, do we need to get y'all in room because something's happening? That's what I'm seeing here with you two. So your guys' energy could be like that, whether it's together or a no contact, but I am saying that if you're together, this person could be trying to get that spark back. Get that spark back of like, you remember when people used to be jealous of us? When we were that young couple, when we first got together and everybody was jealous because we couldn't keep our hands off of one another. What happened to that? And it could have just been something as simple as he needed reassurance, she needed reassurance. And being able to have that conversation and being vulnerable with one another and both of you showing strength that this isn't over, it's never been over, and that you guys are gonna stay committed. The good, the bad, the ugly. You're gonna be able to fix it. You guys could even maybe go out on a date night or something of that sort here coming up if that's your story. Okay, gonna leave it here. Have a blessed day.